Hello, my name is Alexi. Uh, I'm gonna make a video about um, some more response of those so-called God, men of God who grow a biblical beard and stuff. Um, I mean, just I mean, a few years ago, I saw a video uh, by um, what's his name, John Weaver, about biblical and historical significance of a beard and stuff and like I thought it was just you know whatever you know just Judaizer one by himself but actually there's a multiple people now preaching that garbage so I wanna address it so let's play uh, one video is made by um, I don't know there's so many videos uploaded looked at it so let's look at it and think about it. In this presentation, I'm going to be able to show you that the Most High said that He will punish those that destroys or those that disfigures the corners of their beard okay so of course it refers to the old testament but since this person claims to be christian um and he have this revelation 22 14 and the gospel of the kingdom um so this person claims to be a christian so let's, so this is one thing i want you to notice he doesn't claim to be this Hebrew Israelite, uh, what's some uh, some um, a Jew or whatever. He claims to be a Christian. He claims to be a brother in Christ. So let's listen to it. Those that shaves off the corners of their beard, or those that disfigures the corners of their beard, or that that are clean shaven, he said that he will punish them. Before we get to that scripture, uh, let's look at. The commandment in Leviticus 19.27. In Leviticus 19.27, it says, You shall not shave around the sides of your head, neither shall you disfigure the corners of your beard. In King James Version, King James Version says, You shall not mar the corners of your of your beard. So, um, the, the King James says, You shall not mar the corners of your beard. The New King James says, You shall not disfigure the corners of your beard so but they're basically saying the same thing because the word mar and the word disfigure or destroy or ruin they are basically the same thing so the the the, our, the most high is telling us not to destroy or disfigure the corners of our beard so uh where is the corners of our beard this is a picture of myself uh, this is my picture right here, a video of me. Uh, I took this video to kind of uh, give you uh, an idea of what my beard uh, looks like and to also show that I do have a beard and that I do practice what I preach. Um, in this video right here, and this, this is the corner of my beard. This is what you know the corner of beard looks like. So right here, this place that I'm touching right now, these are the, uh, the corners of my beard so this is the corner of my beard right here all the way up there and then down and uh, this is the corner so when it says do not destroy the corner of your beard and then this is the corner this is the you know this is you know, that's what the corner of beard uh, uh, means by the way uh, I saw a couple of videos um, actually like how he explains the beard, or at least you should say, he should not cut the edges of his, of the beard. Actually, um, he actually explains it correctly, uh, because other videos, it's like, you know, some people talk about like, you know, uh, just growing a beard. No, it doesn't talk about the growing a beard. It's not cutting the edges, uh, which is way different. Like, for example, like. If I would, if I would just like, for example, um, cut the sideburns and stuff, and just let it like a beard grow and stuff, that's still breaking the Leviticus nineteen twenty-seven. So, uh, which is like bunch of other, 
um, creatures I kind of noticed but this guy actually kind of he have idea correctly how actually what this is commandment is, is about uh, which actually I don't like I said I don't believe you have to follow it because it's an old covenant either you are under the whole law of Moses or you're not under the law of Moses now you're under the law of Christ you are under the new covenant so but at least this guy actually explains it well Continue on. <clears throat> in this picture right here, uh, this picture right here that you're looking at, uh, where you see the black line, that black line, that's the corners of this guy's beard. Where you see the black line, yeah, the corners of his beard. Um, so this is the corners of our beard, right? Because he goes in details that you know. Some people like, let's see, uh, you know, to thump up, you know, destroying the, this is the corners where you see the black lines. Uh, yeah, he actually make a good point that, yeah, like some people, like, for example, they have a beard, but they cut some of the sides of it, uh, which is actually breaking Leviticus 19.27. But uh, the point is that it's like some preachers who preach, this uh you have to grow a beard they themselves d doesn't uh, doesn't know what they're talking about but at least you know even though i, I would totally disagree with him i have to give him <laughs> what's the name um i guess props for actually executing that commandment correctly because some people they will grow this type of beard but they just still gonna cut it off some of the edges of it so um, you know where you see the red line picture with a blade you see he's basically destroying the edges of his beard and the most high is violating this commandment because he is uh, uh, he's just gonna go over like yeah like some people for example cut like the edges right there where you have to literally grow so uh, which some like I said as a preacher they would like yeah they would do kind of the same thing really like Maybe keep it more on of you know cheeks more and or just cut it or, or grow grow it more on the cheeks or uh, cut them more next I mean or cut the cheek side and let it grow on the bottom so it's hilarious so like I noticed many preachers uh, which the next preacher um, or the next video I'm gonna talk about it's kind of like um, the person who actually um what's the name um he he actually does that and he trying to still preach this Leviticus 19 so uh he actually explains this quite well because some preachers who preach that that you have to grow a beard it's a sin for you to cut the edges and it's like they cutting the edges but they it, it's not about they shall grow a beard it's about not cutting the edges, so it's quite different. But anyway, Using that clipper to destroy the corners of his beard. Blade, right there that he's about to shave, that's the corner of his beard. And that's what the corners of his beard. And then also this guy right here in this picture uh, with a blade. So that's what's going on to destroy the edges of his beard. So you look at, you know, and, you know, but no, it has not been tampered with supposed to do this um, and then so uh, let's get to the scripture that where the Most High says that he will punish those that de that destroys the edges of his beard because remember in Leviticus 19 27 he tells us you shall not destroy the edges of his of your beard you shall not you know uh, destroy or disfigure the edges of your beard uh, that's what he told us in Leviticus 19:27. then in in Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 9 verse uh, 25 and 26 this is a future prophecy it has not been fulfilled yet a future prophecy the most high is telling uh list giving a list of people that he will punish and he says that he will punish uh he included those that that destroys the edges of their beard those that that you know that disfigure the edges of their beard he included them on the list of the people that he will be used to those that destroy the comic chapter 9 verse 25 and 26 and you can I just read this 
from International Standard Version, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 25 and 26. And you can clearly see that he said that he will punish those that shave or those that, that shave around the corners of their beard which is a violation of the commandment in Leviticus 19.27. And I'm going to read another translation here. This is a Darby Bible translation. Darby Bible translation. Jeremiah chapter 9.25.26. It, it says, Behold, days are coming, said Yah, when I will visit all them that are circumcised with the uncircumcised, Egypt, Judah, Edom, and the children of Ammon and Moab, all that have all that have the corners of their beard cut off that dwell in the wilderness for all the nations are uncircumcised and okay so i'm going to read another translation same thing um this is young women on judah on edom on sons of ammon on Am on moab and all and all cutting the corners of the of the beard it's saying the same thing it's and the sons of ammon Moab, and now I'm going to read from King James, verse 26, circumcised. You can see that in this chapter, in this same chapter, same verse in King James, they literally removed the threat that the Most High made, that he will punish those that shaves, that, that destroys the corners of their beard. The saying the same thing, the Most High says that he, their beard, they took it out of King James. They literally took yeah, I mean, but I mean, the point is that I want to point out that yes, with some, uh, I agree with this guy that in the old covenant, old testament, God would punish people who would cut the edges of their beard, and he explained how the <clears throat> what's his name, um, beard would look like. So, um, so continue took it out, you will not find it in your King James, you will not find it in NIV, New Living Translation, and any other translation you have out there, they took it out. But in these four Bible translations, these four different translations, you see that the Most High said that He will punish those that, that destroys the edges of, of, of their beard. So this is a very important issue. Um, he, did, he did make a threat that he will punish those that, that destroy the edges of their beard. And if you're familiar, if you're familiar with the Most High, uh, when he uh, that wear a strange apparel, he will do it because they are violating his commandment. The judgment begins out a threat that the Most High, the same day alone, um, allowed to come. Please subscribe to our YouTube that those who keep his commandments are the ones that will be allowed to come into the kingdom of heaven. This is not a joke. If you uh, have any question or any comment, please feel free to comment below the video. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're going to be uploading more videos about this and other topics. Thank you very much for your time. All right. So, because this brother, at least I hope this brother is open for rebuke. So, uh, well, before actually the... I'm going to present case why, um, what's his name, uh, oh yeah, what's the name, um, why, um, oh yeah, the other argument is actually was given by Mr. Vigilant Christian right there. All right. This guy calls himself Vigilant, Vigilant Christian and like what I kind of notice about him, he just makes tons of like videos about like unbelievers uh i was just like dude man i wanted to comment on s out some of his videos but just like you know what whatever um but this guy is actually much more i guess popular and like interesting thing like he would use uh mr spurgeon uh who was in many people's eyes, like super preaching and stuff, which he's not, in my opinion. I mean, just read his non 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 uh, the sermons that didn't make it to the great sermons of Charles Spurgeon, and you'll see, like he believed in evol evolution, that most of the people will end up in heaven. Um, what's him now? It's weird. I mean, it's just it's like. <laughs> What's the name? Um, 
So it's sad when you exalt man that high. And also notice this. This guy was actually cutting the edges of his beard right there. You look, look the, there's a hair, a hair line and there's a beard line. And he cut the edges off. So it's like, see, like once again, it's like uh, people who trying to use this Leviticus 1927, they don't know what this commandment actually says. It doesn't say to grow a beard. So, but biggest thing I have this is that it's that uh, growing a beard is a hab uh, habit most natural, scriptural, manly. So like in this video, he, well, first of all, like Mr. Um, Vigilant Christian, he will not even talk about the scriptures. He's just going to talk about Mr. Spurgeon and how manly and how if effeminate people like me who just uh what's some um shave their beard and stuff are so and it's it's kind of hilarious it's like i mean he kind of back and forth just like at this uh well at least john weaver he kind of changes that yeah you pretty much like a transsexual and stuff if you shave your beard so let's play this video hey everyone it's the vigilant christian mario and you're here for another edition of Vigilant Biblical Studies. In today's video, I wanted to look at growing a beard biblically. According to many men of God in the past, growing a beard is, well, as uh, Spurgeon said, is a habit most natural, scriptural, manly, and beneficial. Now, if you tuned into my health channel, you know recently I decided to grow out my manly beard. So here's the before and after, and if you haven't seen these videos, I helped you on how to groom, how to oil, how to prepare the beard for the final growth stage. And uh, <laughs> now obviously I'm not being 100% serious here. I don't think it's a sin if you don't have a beard, but I would say... Okay, so he don't think it's a sin, but notice this. He doesn't think it, it's a sin not to have a beard, but notice what kind of scriptures he's going to use. I suggest that you do it, and let me explain why. I believe it's very important that men try and become as masculine as we possibly can, especially in today's world. Let's take a look at this verse. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor uh, uh, idol idolaters, yeah, and adulterers, nor effeminate, there we go, that's the one I want to talk about, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the greedy, da, 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 da. none of those are going to make it into the kingdom of God. But the one I wanted to focus on is an effeminate man. Now, we live in a generation now where this is becoming the norm, and in fact, I was heavily influenced by this. When I was a New Ager, it was all about touching your divine feminine, you know, getting in tune with that part of yourself. So I embraced a lot of feminism and I thought that was good. I thought that was actually progressing, you know, evolving that way. That's that's what men need to do. We need to go and become more feminine and women need to become more masculine and that's a good thing. But in Christianity, that we come to see is a massive deception. Well, I agree to some, uh, I agree, but notice this. He used the word effeminate and now he going to equate People like me who shave their beard to a family. Hmm. Yeah, so he doesn't even go to the Levit uh, as far as I remember from this video, video doesn't go to Leviticus 19.27. He just straight, goes straight to New Testament and pretty much look. Uh, I mean, how it, okay, let's just say this. How it comes out, that's, oh, it's not a scene. But, you know, I want to focus on the word effeminate, and uh, let's continue on. God had created men and women equal but different, and we need to embrace our differences. And one of the things that men are is hairy, masculine, muscular, strong. We need to embrace this part of our nature and not be effeminate. So I'm, I grew out my beard to make myself appear more manly. I feel more manly. Honestly, I mean, just look at the picture. Which one's a man? This looks like a little boy. I could wear a little pink shirt here and look very easily like a homosexual. But over here, I'm a man. I got a beard. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so don't be effeminate. I'm 
Did you notice his laugh? And he talks about, oh, I'm, uh, I'm became a masculine by uh, what's some uh, growing a beard. But look, li li listen to his laugh. Don't be effeminate. I'm a <laughs> listen again. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> dude, this growing a beard didn't help you at all, man. You still left like a girl. Continue on. So don't be effeminate. I'm actually gonna probably do videos. Uh, I'll show you me throwing out my skinny jeans, uh, a bunch of other shirts that probably are pretty effeminate and stuff like that. So I'm doing a cleansing in my own life uh, and I'm pushing myself towards becoming more masculine even in my appearance. Now keep in mind these are external things and really uh, the most important thing is that you're a man on the inside. But I mean if you're a man on the inside why would you be wearing pink shirts, have no beard, you know, look like homosexual, effeminate, little. Whoa, see, once again, he equated wearing the pink shirts. By the way, I'm sorry, in the scriptures, I don't see uh, what's the um, uh, word effeminate. By the way, let me open this up real quick. Um, by the way, that's an e-sword. You can download it for free. Just type in e-sword um on google but like this guy first of all let, let, let's see what this word effeminate means so word effeminate strong concordance um of uncertain of, of uh, affinity so that fine closing figuratively a calamite effeminate uh, soft so Interesting thing like Mr. Um, John Gill uh, would, would <clears throat> uh, what some uh, talk about like word effeminate more with, like a soft person. Um, there's a couple other ones, but they kind of like really like they kind of bundle all together. And I was just like, you know what, whatever. Um, Let's see where is it effeminate. Uh, yeah, and they don't quite define it, so I'm just like, okay, whatever. But yeah, I agree that today's culture is uh, effeminate. Uh, it makes men, you know, pretty much being a girly man, really. That's all they're really trying to do. But Interesting thing, like how he equated people who wear in a pink shirt and being a homosexual, and he bundled them all up. Just like it's almost like what some uh, he's saying that yeah, if you don't have a beard, you're just one of those groups. That's how it came out. Just think about why would you even have this thing on? Just like look, um, so. He, to him, like one of the parts of being effeminate is not having having a beard. Well, the problem is that, like uh, the previous video showed you, that um, it's not about having a beard. It's actually not cutting edges. But of course, uh, but okay, let's just give it to him. Like you know what, he, he doesn't uh, talk about like Leviticus 19. He just goes into the New Testament that you know beard is one of the things that men ought to do and if you are if you if you are feminine then you're just gonna cut your beard off well let's just finish let's how about this let's just finish this whole thing. boy uh you shouldn't want or desire that so just wanted to make this video here to encourage you to grow a beard according to spurgeon it is scriptural manly and beneficial it's the most natural thing exactly god had designed us to grow beards so grow one you know, women can't unless they go on those transgender hormones these days. But for the most part, naturally, according to God's design, women are not even designed to grow beards. Only men. So if you're capable of growing one, grow one. See, once again. So now, he, what's um, uh, It's not a scene, like, notice this. He, it's not a scene in the beginning to not have a beard. Then he compares men who doesn't have a beard to uh, 
homosexuals and stuff. And now he is encouraging by quoting Spurgeon, which is one of the parts is scriptural and manly. So like scripturally, so uh, so like Spurgeon and many other Judaizers um, at that of that time, they would like well. I'm just encouraged. It's not a sin, but you know, now they start comparing uh, these guys. It's, it's actually an interesting thing. Like, it reminds me of this John Weaver sermon on YouTube. Uh, who in the beginning is like, well, it's not a sin not to have a beard. I don't want to put someone's conscience. But then now, uh, what's the matter? Now he starts comparing also like to transgen uh, transsexuals and stuff, people who doesn't have a beard, just like this guy. Well, except this time he talks about effeminate, so he compares people to effeminate, and then, oh, well, I'm just encouraging you. I'm just like, listen, see, like, they like a double tongue. It's a double tongue. In the beginning you say it's not a sin, second, then you compare a man who doesn't have a beard to effeminate, which by the way, who will not inherit the kingdom of God? And now you just, oh, let me just encourage you. It is most natural for you to do so, and it is most masculine and manly, and not what God doesn't want, effeminate, okay? It is women who have soft faces to the touch. The man has the grizzly beard, okay? Just the way it is, by God's design. Time to accept it. Now, a lot of women today, unfortunately, love the effeminate man. They love that. That's that's the look they love. I even seen so many women saying, "Oh, you look so cute here." No, women, why are you attracted to effeminate homosexual-looking men? Grow a beard, okay? Like, love manly men. Tra See, once again, he comp he compared with uh, people without a beard to homosexuals again. Train yourself to love masculine men. You've actually been brainwashed probably by Factory Boys, NSYNC, and all those little effeminate men to desire that. You should desire a strong man, like a real uh, testosterone man. He's a warrior. He's strong. He's gentle. He's loving. He's caring. He's got those parts of the Christ-like character, of course, but he's a masculine man. Now, what I'm going to do for the remainder of the video is just look at these funny little quotes I found from BeardGospelMen.com. Uh, just a little bit of uh, comedy relief for you this Sunday morning. Your problem is not merely the absence of a beard, but your effort to smooth and soften yourself like a woman. <laughs> awesome. Uh -huh. We shall wear the beard after the example of Christ and all of our first saints. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you notice what the... Uh... What this guy, uh, whom he quoted, you shall, uh, we shall wear the beard after the example of Christ, and all, uh, and all our first saints. And it's just like whoa. So, First <clears throat> uh, Corinthians eleven, verse one. Uh, talks about be examples of me as I am of Christ. So, so he would say that pretty much I'm not following Christ. I am in sin. Literally, like you cannot say. How can you say I'm not in, in sin and then quote this guy? Because let's go. Uh, let's go to the First Corinthians eleven verse one. Uh, be ye followers of me, uh, even as I also am of Christ. So, what's the name? Um, so, yeah. According to this guy, whoever it is, Francisca Constitution, I don't know who it is this. Is something manly, natural, severe, despised, and austere? I don't even know what that austere. Austere. Oh, sorry, I'm French, guys. All right. <laughs> Grooming tip for manly Christian men. After You're going to talk about... Dude, you laugh like a girl, man, twice. <laughs> Grooming tip... Oh, sorry, I'm French, guys. All right. <laughs> That's a girly laugh, man. Come on. How about clean the, clean the cup inside and then worry about the beard? First of all... If it's not a scene, 
then why would you even quote them or advise somebody? It's like, look, uh, what's some, uh, some things I just like, it would be nice, I mean, just whatever, dude, if, it, if it's not a command of God, keep your mouth shut and let the Christ be his head. That's it. Continue on. Grooming tip for manly Christian men. After feeding on God's word, always check for crumbs that may have fallen into your beard. <laughs> That's awesome. The beard covers a multitude <laughs> of chins. <laughs> the five points of beard and beardism. <laughs> They're making <laughs> this is <laughs> Calvinism has five points, but according to this, so it is beardinism. Total awesomeness, unconditional growth, limited trimming, irresistible manliness, perseverance of the whiskers. <laughs> And this is Knox, man. Knox had the, the, the king of, of beards. And apparently, I didn't know this exists, but uh, they have Spurgeon Spruce Beard Bomb. I'm definitely going to get my hands on some of that. That is pretty epic. So there you go, everyone. A little bit of a comedy video. But, I mean, there's a bit of truth to this. Uh, we do need to strive for masculine um, masculinity and not be effeminate. And I've been a victim of this. I'll admit it. And it's a process of working this stuff out. So I decided to grow my beard. Look. If it helps you, okay, go ahead. But once you start using the scriptures, once you start using so-called godly man to show that, you know, you, you know, what some of it, really, really, I don't know what he, he was thinking by using First Corinthians 6, but it's like, you just pretty much saying that every person who cuts his beard is a family and they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And it's funny to you, but you're just like, oh, a little bit of a true thing. So, uh, is it finished? And uh, look more masculine. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Stay vigilant. Fear no evil and study God's word to show yourself approved. So, now I'm going to deal with those uh, Judaizers, uh, this Francisco Constitution, whatever. Charles Spurgeon, uh, vigilant Christian, and Mar by his, his name is Mario, I think, yeah, and uh, the guy whom I played before, it's just, and uh, John Weaver. It's just like you guys. Um, first of all, get a job. Ch you know what? Fi trying to find a job, like particularly like, um, I I give you an example, like in in the army, U.S. Army. You have to shave every day. If, I don't know if you notice. Also, like in uh, Las Vegas Police Department, you have to shave every day too if you're a regular police officer. Um, or, I mean, I don't know now because I uh, moved from Las Vegas in 2010. So uh, now it's 2008. So it's like, at least back then, if you're a regular police officer, you have to be clean shaven. So, what's some, or just being even a security guard uh, in some companies, you have to be clean shaven. Some of the casinos, you have to be also, you, you, you might have a mustache, but else, but you're gonna have to cut the beard off. Um, many companies will only hire, uh, and part of the contract is that. Uh, one of the policies is being clean shaven when you come to work or whatever po post or whatever um, you know position you're holding in so you know those uh, clowns who just you know sit making bunch of videos um, uh, laughing about it not realizing that <laughs> men some men have to work and some men won't be able to get a job unless they have to cut a beard like for example uh, I mean there's so many examples like other one is like being a hazmat uh, back in the um, army I was actually doing a technical rescue and like you know you know put a gas mask on you know you have this beard and be if you have a thick beard a uh, thick beard you might be able to tighten it up so the what's the um, mom so the mask would seal when you breathe on the side, you know. So the point is that those like Judaizers right there, um, 
you know, well, I mean, they would say, oh, well, I mean, that's unto the Lord, and like, and so they use those two scriptures, Leviticus 19.27 and 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 through 11, uh, which they use the word effeminate. So why, um, <clears throat> so I want to answer, why beards for Christians uh, a preference, not a testament, New Testament command? Well, listen, if you left like a girl, yet you have a beard, dude, really? Seriously, you're gonna talk about masculinity to me? Whatever. So, <clears throat> so why? So, I would say that all testament law that God gave to Moses is no longer whole, uh, Christian is not under it. Uh, Christians are to keep Christ's commandments, also talks about uh, the law of Christ, yet if this nothing, uh, what's some, um, nothing have a, how I call this, um, not one verse in the New Testament refers back to the Old Testament command, and by the way, a new covenant was established on the cross, when Christ died on the cross, so some of even the commandments during the life of Christ, like for example, I think it's Mark chapter 1, where uh, Christ healed a man and uh, tells him to, sh to show him, uh, to sh uh, uh, so Christ healed this guy and then uh, tells him to go uh, thy way, show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for the, a testimony unto them. So some things um, uh, like during the Christ ministry were part uh, was some was still kind of like a in transaction period of the old and the new covenant. So, but <clears throat> if you look at the so the point is that it's like <clears throat> So we're gonna focus why um, if you want to have a beard that's fine but once you start comparing men who doesn't have a beard either to a lawbreaker because they don't follow Leviticus 19.27 or to um, what's his name um, to effeminate who, who will not inherit the kingdom of God now we have a problem um, so so why Christians don't have to have a beard? So let's read. <clears throat> let read Hebrews seven eleven uh, verse twelve. If there uh, therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, by the way, Levitical priesthood, book of Leviticus. <clears throat> if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood. For under it the people received the law. What further need was there that uh, another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek, and not uh, and not be called the other of the uh, order of Aaron? For the uh, the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity the change else a change of the law so the priesthood changed the law else has changed so you're not under the uh, mosaic law next thing uh, <clears throat> talks about what's his name uh, uh, Jesus at the wedding and then uh, I mean I'm sorry Jesus not fasting like uh, uh, disciples of John, John the Baptist and Pharisees and Jesus replied and Jesus said to them can the wedding guests fa fast while the bridegroom is with them as long as they have the bridegroom with them they cannot fast <clears throat> the days will come uh, when the br uh, <clears throat> bridegroom is taken away from them and then they will fast in that day 
no one saw a piece of uh, a piece of unshrunk clothes on a an old garment if he does uh, the patch tears away from it and the new from the old and a uh, uh, war tear it made and <clears throat> And no one puts a new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the wine will burst the wine skin, and the <clears throat> wine uh, uh, wine is destroyed. And also, uh, and so, uh, so the the skins, but the new wine uh, is for fresh wine skins. So the point is that. It's a pretty much a um, parable about like don't put the uh, Old Testament commandments and laws uh, into new covenant. Think of a covenant like a contract. So you don't put the old uh, stip stipulations of the contract in a new contract. No, you keep the new covenant. Uh, what's the word? Being a new covenant. New covenant, new law. Um, so what's the matter? So <clears throat> I'm gonna go over book of Hebrews and just show it to you that uh, book of Hebrews describes how God changed priesthood, the covenant, and the law. So let's look at it. So interesting thing, like many people don't realize, like uh, they just jump into like Hebrews and like trying to prove you like what's the um, uh, that you should keep a Sabbath which is Saturday by the way and it's like no it talks about Christ being our Sabbath and we have entered Sabbath by faith because first chapter is about Christ then chapter 2 switches from Christ to faith and chapter 3 talks about faith and then the last verse of book of Hebrews is uh, book of chapter 3 uh, verse 19 so we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief therefore while the promise of entering his rest still stands let us fear lest one of you should uh, seems to uh, to have failed to reach it for good news came to us just as to, to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not unified by faith with those who listened. <clears throat> For we have believed, entered the rest, uh, as he said, uh, as I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter my wrath, rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has some somewhere spoke of the seventh day in this way, and God uh, rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this passage, he said, "They shall not enter my rest." By the way. For those who think that uh, there's a, you should keep a Sabbath, are you entering Sabbath by keeping a Sabbath or having faith in Christ? You cannot have both. You say, oh, uh, I'll keep a Sabbath uh, and I enter by Christ. No, that's it's like either you keeping the Sabbath. I mean, if you try to attempt to keep a Sabbath by your works, you have sinned and you didn't literally walking away from Christ. That's the main point of book of Hebrews. Or you ent enter the Sabbath by faith in Christ. Continue on. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, <clears throat> enter it and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience again he appointed a certain day today saying through David so long afterwards in the words already quoted 
Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For, for if Joshua had, had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So <clears throat> then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest uh, has also rested from his works as God did from his. So, once again, question. Uh, did you enter, the, did you receive the Sabbath rest by not working on Saturday or Sunday, if you want to call it Christian Sabbath? Um, did you enter by keeping the Sabbath or by having faith in Christ and stop worrying about Sabbath keeping? Whatever. <clears throat> Next thing. He actually describes uh, priesthood now. So let me undermine that. Under So, it's getting bigger. <clears throat> for every high priest chosen from among the people is anointed to act on behalf of man in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the arrogant and wayward since he himself is beset with weaknesses weakness because of this he's obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins just as he does for those of the people and no one takes his honor from him but only when god, god uh, when called by god just as aaron was so also christ did did not exalt himself to be uh, made a high priest but was appointed by him by him who said to him you are my son today I have begotten you as he says elsa in another place you are a priest forever after the order of melchizedek continue on <clears throat> but uh, 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 so Hebrews 5 11 and 14 <clears throat> about this one uh, we have much to say and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing for though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of god you need milk not solid food for anyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of unright uh, of righteousness since he is a child but solid food is for the mature for those who have their power of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So, <clears throat> uh, he talks to the uh, Jews who pretty much needed correction once again. It's, you know, it's, it's bad when you have to go back to the uh, milk instead of solid food so <clears throat> so continue on um, so <clears throat> continue on for people swore by something greater than themselves and in all the disputes an oath is final for confirmation so when God desired to show more conviction to the uh, heirs of the promise than changeable character of his purpose. He guaranteed 
visa north so that by two unchangeable things is in which it is impossible for God to lie. Uh, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that uh, enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus was gone as a forerunner on our behalf having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek and by the way this is a show that the change uh, the God has changed priesthood and the covenant and the law so um, uh, Hebrews 7 1 till I don't know when oh wow it's a long chapter but I want you to catch something um, <clears throat> for this Melchizedek the king of Salem uh, priest of the Most High met Abraham returned from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him and to him Abraham appointed a tenth part of everything. He is first by translation of his name King of Righteousness. And then he is also King of Salem. That is King of Peace. Um, he is without father or mother or genealogy. Having neither beginning of the days nor end of life. But resembling the Son of God. He continues, continues as a, uh, continues a priest forever. See how great this man was to whom Abraham, the patriarch, gave a tenth of the spoils, and those descendants of Levi, Levi, who received the priestly office, have a. <clears throat> command in the law to take tenth from the people that is from the brothers by the way some preachers trying to use this one for uh, collecting tithe and offerings for them and I'm like well first of all uh, Melchizedek was a type of Christ you are not the Christ pastor second of all with the change of the priesthood, the law has also changed. The who who is now priest? Every single believer of Christ. There's no there's no such thing as a laity uh, in the new covenant because there's only one. The uh, I guess the, don't call no one teacher for one is your teacher. Don't call no one leader for all of you brothers. So, whole thing about uh, people, some people using this uh, to get some money from um, naive and uh, ignorant uh, people who goes to church or would say church building. Um, it's just nonsense. But continue on. Uh, where I stop that? I already forgot. Okay. Law in which tithe members. So, who received tithe paid tithe through Abraham, for he was still in the loins of his ancestor when Melchizedek met him. Jesus compared to Melchizedek. Now, if he uh, now if profession had been attained through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. Notice what kind of law is it talking about, huh? What further need uh, would there have been for another priest to rise after the order of Melchizedek? rather that one named after the order of Aaron. For when there is a change in the priesthood, 
there is an assess necessarily a change in the law as well. Let's see, the law has changed, the covenant changed. So, continue on. For the one of whom those things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no one uh, has ever served at, at the altar. I don't know, what's, what, why did it put so much? Uh, so you are Melchizedek forever, uh, referring to Christ. Um, oh, also notice this. Uh, for on the one hand, a former commandment is set aside because its weakness and uselessness for the for the law made nothing perfect let me ask you this question does uh are you looking at those 10 commandments and uh, you look at oh man i i'm a perfect guy i kept 10 uh, made i kept this so called moral law absolutely not you look and you look at the law and you see you condemned you're a sinner you deserve death. How's it made you perfect? Faith in Christ. What makes you perfect? But <clears throat> one, on the other hand, a hope is introduction through which we draw near to God. And it was not without an oath for those who formerly became priests uh, were made such without an oath. But this one was made a priest with an oath by the one who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were ma many in number because they were pre uh, prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save the uttermost those who draw near to God. Through him, oh, I'm sorry. He is able to save to the uttermost those who dwell near to God through him. Since he always lives to continue the uh, intercession for them. For, for it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and those for, the, uh, for those people, of the people, since he did this once for all, where he offered up himself, for the law anointed men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath which came later than the law appointed a son who has been made perfect forever. <clears throat> now, uh, how many chapters I got? Okay. So, uh, Hebrews 8, 1. Now, the point in what we are saying is this. We have a, such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister in the holy places in uh, the true tent that the Lord set up, not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices Thus, it is necessary for this priest also to have 
something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve a copy, a shadow. Notice this. Priests who offer they serve a copy and the shadow of the heavenly things. Uh, for when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God, saying, He that uh, you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mount, uh, mountain. Uh, but as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is so much more excellent than the old uh, as the covenant he mediates is better since it is in, uh, enacted on better promises. <clears throat> For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. For he sends fault with them when he said, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel. Notice this. And the house of Judah, not the covenant that I made with the fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant. Talks about people who, by the way, this one right there. Talks about people who received ten commandments. So, continue on. Let me try that. Doesn't work. For they did not continue in my covenant, and so I showed no concern for them, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind, and write them on their heart, and, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach one another, one uh, each one his neighbor, and one his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I, notice this, uh, what's the matter, the new covenant promise, uh, came uh, <clears throat> after Christ died on the cross and rose again and the Pentecost the Holy Spirit came upon believers and notice this for I will be merciful towards their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more I in speaking of a new covenant he makes the one obsolete. I mean, and notice this. Which covenant? When he took him out of Egypt, he gave him Ten Commandments, circumcision, a bunch of other, uh, Sabbath, it's another one, that uh, you're part of the Mosaic covenant, now you're in a new covenant. And notice this, in speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first obsolete. This uh, Leviticus 19, whatever, that's, that's a still old covenant. And uh, what is becoming obsolete is growing old, is ready to vanish away. And by the way, those who don't quite understand this, um, 
there's a quick es eschatological chart pretty much with destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Uh, the sec uh, so the new covenant started at the technically at the ministry of Christ, but then at the cross it's validated, and then in the new covenants the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, which was promised to be in the new covenant was given to the recipients of that new covenant, and um, but yeah there was like old covenant like still like. Um, you know, for example, like in Romans talks about like, you know, don't judge your brother on whether food, drink, or days and stuff. It talks about to the uh, Gentile believers who had uh, Jewish Christians among them. So, and then of course in 70 AD, destruction came and the old covenant vanished away. So, we no longer live in this kind of like a what's his name um all all under like a all, on like kind of like a high column um we no longer live under this uh thing like tolerating all testament traditions because there's none of it left i mean you can you can try to pretend this uh nine commandments but really like sabbath keeping which is saturday you cannot work not only you cannot work but else uh, people under you cannot work so stop saying like this christian sabbath thing just stop and you by the way can't kindle the fire on sabbath in the old testament so if you want to bring some old commandments into the new covenant go ahead but telling you you just gonna act like a hypocrite so continue on Where is it? so uh, Hebrews 9 1 now even the first covenant had regulations for worship and earth, earth earthly place of holiness uh, then skip down to verse Hebrews 9 verse 15 to 20 Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant Talks about Christ so then those who are called may receive the promise etern eternal uh, inheritance since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant Uh, whose death has occurred that redeems them? Christ's death. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will taking only effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it alive. Therefore, uh, therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been um, declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and he sup and sprinkled bo both the book itself and all the people saying this is the blood of the covenant that God com uh, commanded for you for since the law has uh, has uh, but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of those realities it can never uh, it can never by the same sacrifice that I continually offer every year make perfect those who draw near <clears throat> uh, so when he said above he uh, you have neither des desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices or offerings and burn offerings and sin offerings 
those are offering offered according to the law which law law of Moses see like I used to believe this uh, uh, dividing uh, the law in like three parts and stuff and um, it's just wrong no it's like one law um, there's not like moral judicial and sacramental it's one law it's either you are under the whole law of Moses or you or, or you none of the law of Moses and now you're under the new covenant of Christ <clears throat> so continue on uh, Hebrews <clears throat> Hebrews uh, 10 verse 15 and 18 and the Holy Spirit also bear, bears witness to us for after the saying this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days declares the Lord I will put my laws in their hearts and write them on their minds and then he adds I I will remember the sins and I will I will I will remember their sins and the lawless deeds no more <clears throat> where where there is forgiveness of those there is no longer any offering for sin therefore brothers since we have such confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus uh, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh and since we have a great priest over the house of God let us draw near uh, near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our uh, heart sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with the pure water uh, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without waving, wavering for he had promised is faithful and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not not neglecting the meeting together uh, as it is habit of some uh, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day draw near uh, going skip into a few verses Hebrews 10 37 to 39 yet a little while and he comes one will make not delay but my righteousness uh, but my righteous one shall live by faith and if he shrinks back my soul has no pleasure in him but we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed but of those who have faith and preserve their souls so once again are you shrinking back to the uh, <clears throat> oops are you shrinking back to the <clears throat> law of Moses you know, I uh, are you going back to it, or are you staying in Christ by faith in Christ? That's the question. Continue on. It's a little bit more. For yet <clears throat> a little while, and the coming one will come and will not delay. But righteous, but my righteous. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, Hebrews twelve twenty two to twenty six. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable, innumerable, innumerable angels in the festival gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God to the judge of all and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect and to Jesus the mediator of the new, of a new covenant and 
uh, to sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not uh, refuse him who, sp who is speaking, for he for if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less we, <coughs> uh, much less will we escape if we reject him who warned uh, warns us from heaven. Continue. Uh, interesting thing, like what someone here talks about. People talk about. Oh, it's just. Uh, talks about um, sacramental law but then look at like Hebrews 13 1 through 5 those are not uh, high column uh, those are not uh, uh, sacramental laws now those like a uh, high call so-called moral laws if you like but I would just call them command commandments of the New Testament so continue on Hebrews 13, 1 through 5. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember those who are in prison, as through uh, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, uh, since you are Elsa, are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. Keep your life free from the love of money, and be content uh, with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever by the way I want to say something actually yeah verse 8 remember me talking about like with the change of the priesthood the law has also changed well yes and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever God did not change but the God who gave them a mosaic law mosaic covenant Old Testament covenant the covenant of so circumcision the same God he established a new covenant on the cross so continue on. by the way um, uh, since this person or is it this guy right there or is it all right hey everyone it's the vigilant uh, he mentions Charles Spurgeon. Is it uh, what's some uh, growing a beard is a, ha a habit most natural, scriptural, and like biggest thing is like I have a problem with scriptural. I really, I mean, look if it helps your masculinity, sure, but like look when you say scriptural, then we have a problem because now you uh, like this reformed theology teaches this I can summarize it like this living under the law well I mean actually I would say living under the law disables you to live for Christ Nelson uh, question mark um, living under oh being by faith yet so Charles Spurgeon and like many other reformers um, because of the masses and you gotta you know, many of them are goats and they don't have the Holy Spirit within them. You need to come up with something that, you know, uh, that you can control some people. Um, so, 
two points I want to try to disprove that it, it will be impossible for you to live under the law uh, and trying to serve Christ and you cannot separate being justified by faith and yet live under the law. It's the, there is no way. There's no way. It's double talk. So I'm going to go over some of those verses. So first chapter one talks about like, you know, he, uh, he introduced, Paul introduces who writes and then he tells them, look, he who preaches another gospel, let them be accursed. And if an angel or anybody else preaches, once again, let them be accursed. So Galatians chapter 2, actually, he starts off with this. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he was eaten with the Gentiles, but when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party, and the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically, hypocritically along with him. So then even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, if you, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you force Gentiles to live like Jews? So the question is this, how is it so many preachers who are Gentiles and attempt to live like a Jews to some degree but then but they themselves are Jews and command people to live like I mean they themselves are Gentiles and while they try to oppose, uh, force people to live like Jews put them back under the law of Moses ridiculous continue on <clears throat> we ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Jesus Christ in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Because by the works of the law, no, no one will be justified. And many, like, what's his name, Mr. Spurgeon would agree with me. But the problem is this. Continue on. But if in our, in our endeavor to be justified, to be justified in Christ, uh, we too were form, uh, found to be sinners. <clears throat> Is Christ then ser servant of sin? Surely not. For if I rebuild what I tore down, I prove myself to be a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law, so that I might, might live to God. Notice this. How can you, if you're still alive to the law, how can you live to God? So, I want to ask you a question. Did you... Are you
how can you, you know, it's interesting, like, before I used to think, like, oh, you know, yeah, I died to the law in the sense of justification, yet I have to leave, um, I have to leave by the law. That's how many reformers would teach that text. But the problem is this, continue on. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer uh, who uh, I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. Notice this, how much live, like live, live. And you got leave in me, who leaves in me. Leave in the flesh. I mean, continue on. I do not nullify the grace of God. For if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be anyone who does not obey, uh, who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law, and do them. See, do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. The righteous shall live by faith. What is this? Leave once again. But the law is not a faith. Interesting statement. The law is not a faith. Then the one who does them shall live by them. Notice this again. Live by them. If you want to do the law, you better live by all of them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hanged on a tree. So that is Jesus, Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit true faith uh, to give a human example brothers even with a man-made covenant no one annuls it or adds to it what <coughs> uh, adds to it uh, it once it will uh, it will be ratified now the promises were made to to Abraham and to his offspring. Um, it does not say and to offsprings, uh, referring to many, but uh, ref referring to one and to your off offspring, who is Christ. The, this, this is what I mean. The law which came 430 years afterwards does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance came by the law, it is no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to, uh, gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions until the offspring should come to whom the promise uh, had been made and it was put in place through angels by an uh, intermediary, intermediary, <clears throat> so and answers why was the law added so you could keep it no it added because of transgression so you could see your sin clearer okay now before faith came we were held captive under the law imprisoned 
until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our uh, guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. Uh, it's like, think of this, a guardian, somebody tells you what to do, right? But then, once you come to Christ, you're no longer under the guardian. Do you, list, you, do you still listen to the guardian? Come on. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. Uh, for as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Therefore, uh, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Uh, there is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all, uh, all in Christ. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave. Through he is the, uh, he is the owner of everything, but he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. <clears throat> In the same way, the Elsa when we were children were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world but when the fullness of time had come god sent forth his son born of woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons and because you are sons god has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying Abba father so you are no longer a slave but a son and if a son uh, then an error true God um, so this is actually my main one right there formerly when you did not know God you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods but now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world? Those uh, whose slaves you want to be once more, you observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I may have labored over you in vain. That's like the same thing with Judaizers who keep a Sabbath or like um, those Jewish holidays and stuff, or I would say I would say man-made commandments like Christmas, also can apply. But this is mostly concerning about um, people who keep um, Jewish things. So continue on. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, like, tell me those who want to be under the law of Moses, tell me those who desire to grow a beard because of Leviticus 19. Do you not listen to the law? Uh, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, while the son of the free was born through promise. Now this may be interpreted allegorically. Those women are two covenants, one from Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, those like uh, Ten Commandments was given. And uh, this Mount Sinai, Ten Commandments, Bear children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, who corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. I mean, go take a trip to Jerusalem and tell, hey, 
You're a bunch of spiritual slaves. Continue on. But the <clears throat> but the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our uh, mother, for it is written, uh, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear, break forth and cry aloud, you who are in labor for the uh, for the children of the uh, desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. Now you brothers like Isaac are children of promise. For just as at this time at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, so also it is now. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son, for the son of the slave woman shall not inherit, the, uh, inherit with the son of the free woman. So brothers, we are not children of the slave, but of the free. For freedom, in, uh, for freedom Christ has set us free, stand firm therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery question Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. I don't like that. And... I would say this, every man who accepts I have to grow a beard to be more biblical and more masculine, then he's obligated to keep the whole law. And you are severed from Christ. You who would be justified by the law, you have fallen away from grace. So keep 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 have that beard. Justify yourself by that beard. Say, say that you are, you know, doing this in the name of the Lord. Whatever, I don't care. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled is one uh, in one word you shall love your neighbor as yourself but if you bite and devour one another what shall that you are not consumed by one another but i say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh for those uh, for the, uh, those are opposite to one another to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Uh, now the works of the flesh are evident. Notice this: if you are born again, you know even. The, uh, to some degree, you can discern. You don't need to be like, oh, um, is this as a sexual immorality or not? I was like, no, listen, look. If if you've been born again, some things you can discern easily. You don't have to be, you, you don't have to even have commentaries. Or, or like, I'll give you an example. Like, 
you don't have to even like know, uh, know to have like oh is that King James right uh, when it says um, uh, effeminate nor effeminate or you have you look at ESV and it doesn't have it and like oh uh, it just says man uh, nor man who practice homosexuality so they meet in ASV word effeminate which is actually in Greek so uh, but the point is this that God will guide you in what translation what does it actually mean the same thing like uh, so it says now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery uh, now it's actually a big new trend coming around that Sorcery just means like you know uh, abusing the drugs. Yet you can just you know celebrate Halloween and all and kinds of garbage. Along with that, it's like no sorcery, ma uh, magic, things like this. Come on now, those are works of the flesh. Enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, uh, revilers. Dis dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, or uh, orgies, and things like those. I warned you, as I warned you before, that those who do s such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such thing there is no law so listen if, if you're in a new covenant God will write the law upon your heart and he will tell you what's right and what's wrong some things are obvious and some things you know you might have to um, study and think about it and some some someday God will reveal this to you like this is wrong you know like um <clears throat> so what's the uh, if the person is truly born again god will show them you know god will conform them to the image of christ so but continue on and those who belong to christ jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not uh, become cons conceited, uh, provoking one another, envying one another. It is those who want to make a good show in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised. Or so coming back to the title of the video, it do uh, it is those who wants to uh, make a good showing in the flesh uh, who would try to force you to grow a beard because they think it's you know gives you like you following commandments this Leviticus 19 what makes you more masculine it's like dude really like <sighs> okay um, and only in order that they may be may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. You know, there's a difference being persecuted for the cross of Christ and being persecuted because you wanna have a beard and now you literally just say those are a bunch of lawless people they cut the beard off and uh, or those are a bunch of feminine men who doesn't have a beard, like look. You, you've been persecuted but now by other Christians so you've been rebuked by other Christians not for the cross of Christ but you now you've been really um, p persecuted because of self-righteousness or being a Judaizer that's more correct term <clears throat> for even those who are circumcised uh, do not do not uh, circumcise, do not themselves keep the law. Like I, I pointed this one out, that the second video guy, he does not keep the law. 
he still cuts the edges of some beard like in the first video I showed that you know it's it's either you just let it grow or you, it's, it's not about having a beard it's like literally you're not cutting the edge of some of it to look pretty so stop but they desire to have you to circumcise that they may boast in your flesh or like those people who trying to get you grow a beard uh, they they boast in your flesh but far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world for neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision but a new creation it doesn't matter if you have a beard or not have a uh, if you have a beard or you don't have a beard but if you're born again you're not gonna be acting effeminate either you have a beard or not have a beard look um, what's the matter you telling me like uh, many men in the military who at least claim to be Christians are effeminate because they don't have a beard I mean, are you joking? Come on, Mario. <clears throat> and is for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. By the way, New Testament church is the new Israel of God. It is the new uh, it is the Israel of God, the church, the believers in Christ. So something to think about it. Uh, wow, I actually made a pretty long list. But um, think of this. Um, in Ephesians 5.3 it says, Sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness will not be even named among you as is proper among saints. So... God will reveal you what's pure and what's impure, what is sexual immorality and what is not, what is covetousness or greediness and what is not. Think of this like, um, uh, was it a little bit over a couple of years, actually a couple of years ago, a friend of mine was visiting um, me in Louisiana and driving through and uh, he was driving with a of a girl uh, who happens to be friends and like not a boyfriend and girlfriend nothing like this just friends uh, but the problem is this that uh, when they were driving through um, I'm sure people would be like oh you know you guys staying in the same hotel room yet he would say oh uh, uh, they didn't have sex but it is a hint of sexual immorality so and then look at other ones. Uh, let there be no filthiness or foolish talk, nor crude joke, crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. Let me ask you this question, people who is like, oh, uh, thou shall not take God's name in vain. But what about filthy, filthy talk or foolish talk? Do you foolishly joking about holy things of God? Come on, a crude joking, whatever. So, uh, um, but interesting thing, like I want you to point something out, like people, like, well, Alexi, you know, um, you know, we need a, the law to give us, you know. What is right and what is wrong? Yes, I agree. We, uh, all, all of us would say, I mean, all Christians would say, all of us have a Holy Spirit. Uh, I, but what I see in the New Testament is this: that um, you can have the form of godliness, but deny the power of the Holy Spirit. That it, it's not. It's just like for some people, the Holy Spirit is just like a, a helps you to. 
uh, interpret the Bible better? And I was like, yes, but also it gives you strength to fight sin and win sin in your life, to be, uh, to be conqueror of sin in your life. So uh, people, you know, who would try to like, you know, oh, you know, what's the name of it? It's like you know you need to study the scriptures more to you know to fight sin but it's like no you just need to ask up or get on your knees and ask God to give you victory over specific sin continue on and notice this like he talked about don't be this uh, do not do, do not you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God uh, don't be deceived neither uh, the uh, sexually immoral, nor adultery, adulterers, nor mental price homosexuality, that's the NISB, and like I said, it's missing, or the feminine. Uh, and you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Now, uh, God give, enables you to have a victory by faith in Christ by the Holy Spirit over the sins in your life. So, another thing is like, you know, people trying to bring Christians under the law and look, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57, it says this, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, like, the power of sin is the law. So, if you want to sin more, just put more law on it. Just write, thou shalt not commit adultery in every, ver every uh, corner of your house. But uh, it's not going to help you. It's actually going to cause you even more. So, how... You want to have a victory over sin is through Lord Jesus Christ. He is our mediator. You go uh, to Christ. You ask him for the more Holy Spirit so that he would uh, that you would win the battle or against uh, a sin in your life. Whatever enemy, what kind of is it? Pornography, adultery, adultery, greed, love of money, whatever. You go to Jesus Christ and ask for the Holy Spirit. You already know what's, what your sin is. You know the enemy. You don't need to uh, f uh, what's the matter? think about wh who is your enemy. You already know it. Now you need the, uh, the general or the captain of your salvation to come and kill that sin. And the vic how are you going to have a victory over, over that sin? It's going to Jesus Christ uh, and asking Him for the Holy Spirit, more power over sin. But the problem is that, that many Christians, I used to be a part of, uh, some do the same mistake too. Like, oh, I need to meditate what's, uh, you know, adultery is, you know, what's the sexual immorality. No, no, you already know that you already have sinned. You already know you need a victory. The power is not from the law, but power comes from Christ, and Christ can give you the Holy Spirit to fight that sin. So, continue on. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. Such is the confidence that we have through Jesus, through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of the new co of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, and the Spirit gives life. Now. If the minister of death craved in stone uh, letters on stone came in such a glory that the Israelites uh, could not gaze at Moses, 
face because of its glory which was being brought to an end uh, will not the minister of the spirit uh, have even more glory for uh, if there was glory in the minis min in the ministry of condemnation the ministry of righteousness f must be far exceeded in glory in in indeed uh, this is the case uh, was once had glory has come to have no glory at all so see like now the law the ten commandments the minister of condemnation had glory but now has come to uh, have no glory at all because of the glory that su supra uh, su suppresses it for if what was being brought to an end came with glory much more <clears throat> uh, will uh, what is permanent have glory since we have such a hope we are very bold not like Moses who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not uh, gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end <clears throat> and it just goes on whatever oh actually no but their minds were hardened for to this day when they read the old covenant they read this Leviticus that same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ it is taken away yes to this day whenever Moses is read a veil lays over their hearts but when one turns to the Lord the veil is removed now the Lord is the spirit and where is the sp where is the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom so you might ask <clears throat> what's his name uh, why do we need the Bible if the Holy Spirit will teach us all things why yeah, I mean that's a good question I mean I had this question too so 2nd Corinthians 13 5 examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith test yourself or do you not realize about yourself that Christ is in you unless indeed you have failed to meet the test and how you test yourself if you are truly in the faith if you have the Holy Spirit is by looking at the scriptures so next one is Galatians 6 4 but let uh, each one test his own work and then his reason to boast will be boast in himself alone and not in his neighbor so you test uh, let each one test his work that's another one like you examine it like see like there's a faith aspect and like test is his own work like you know uh, you know you doing the uh, what's the uh, do you do God's will another one is like examine yourself like whether you're not in the faith like faith you know like you looking at who Christ is what faith is do you actually have the true faith? Do you actually believe in true Christ? Then you examine uh, your own works. Like, hey, look, you know, maybe I'm, you know, I'm not even doing the will of God. Maybe I'm doing the work of Satan. Then you test it. Like, just like Peter. Think of this. Peter was like, uh, in one minute, like, oh, you are the son of God, you know. Uh, but then another minute, well, far be it from you, Lord. And then uh, Christ told him, uh, the, uh, with some, uh, get behind me, Satan, you, for you have the, um, you have in mind the, um, what's some, uh, um, concerns of man and not of God, something like that. So 
you examine you do you do do you actually uh, because sometimes we have this uh, in doing something in the name of God yet God does not please so I hope you understand next one is first John 4 1 beloved beloved do not believe every spirit so do not believe everything but test the spirits uh, to see whether they are from God for many false prophets have gone out into the world so you would God gave us the scriptures so you would not be deceived and you would be able to test it then it's like talks about faith that we proclaim faith a word of faith that we proclaim and like um, even if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is going to believe in your heart. For with the one, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses is saved. For the Scripture says, everyone who believes in Him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between uh, no, and it calls on His name. How then? Uh, how? then will they call on him in whom they have not believed and how and how they will believe in him of whom they never heard and how are they to hear without someone preaching and how are they to preach unless they send uh, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news by the way, how do you know this good news, the gospel of your salvation is the right? You check in with scriptures because by, but, but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says. So like you have to have knowledge of the gospel. You have to know what it says, what is written. So you search the scriptures for yourself to see if it's so. So... <clears throat> so that's another aspect why you need the scriptures so um, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ so notice if you don't know what Christ said uh, in his gospels you know how you know it's, it, that's the truth another one Jude 1 3 beloved although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation I found it necessary to write uh, appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once given uh, was uh, once uh, that was once for all delivered to the saints no so there's another, I mean, there's a lot more to it, why we need scriptures, but those like, you know, if those like basic things that I can think of, why we need scriptures, uh, even in a new covenant, why we still need to study, those are major things. <laughs> so I hope it helped. So and leave a comment if you have some, uh, something to say and rebuke me. I'll glad, gladly accept a rebuke if you can show it from scriptures. That's it. Have a nice day.